Well, I hope you're all well and uh, looking after yourself, keeping safe. It's another beautiful day. What is this day? Dear me. Wow, we are on Monday. This is incredible, isn't it? So, the 4th of May. Wow. Oh, this lockdown is putting years on us, isn't it? But I uh, just want to thank you all for your encouragement. I want to thank you all for encouraging one another and building one another up. And do continue to do that. Uh, can we just pray? Father, we do thank you for, for your blessings upon us. We thank you that, that you protect us, you watch over us. Do pray, Lord, for the sick of the church and continue to touch them, Lord. We think of Pauline and, and Helen and Rose and we pray you'd strengthen them, heal them completely, Father, for rob him of this tumour, Lord, that you'd shrink it, remove it, Father, and restore to him health and, and strength, Lord, and others who think of Herbie, who's a bit disorientated, to strengthen him and be with Elizabeth also. Others in the church, Lord, who think of James and Ina, Lord, we pray that you build them up, and others, Lord, who stand in need at this time, and we pray your blessing upon all. Thank you, Father, that you, you have plans for us, you have purposes for us, even though if we don't know what they are, we believe it in Jesus' name amen i want to continue looking at words uh, uh i started this so you're probably wondering where this this came about but anyway where it came about was like anything else on social media whether it's twitter instagram facebook or, or vk or whatever it is you use there's a lot of uh evangelism going on and a lot of it's good and then a lot of it's bad now I probably wouldn't use, without being judgmental, I probably wouldn't use the term evangelism for bad. It's from a judgmental uh, standpoint, uh, it's a judgmental character. So basically they're putting out there, uh, the pandemic has been brought by God to punish you for A, B, C, D. And that doesn't stack up with God's word because remember what I, I constantly remind you, we're not under judgment, we're under grace. Of course there's consequences to our sin. But to say that God brought this is somewhat estranged and hard to match up in his word. On the other side, uh, God uh, can make it work for his good because all things work together for good. Amen. What the enemy brought for war and destruction, God can bring for blessing. Now, I don't know how that pans out. I don't know how God can do that, but I believe that he, he will do it. I believe he's doing stuff, isn't he? He's doing some stuff in our hearts. Uh, so what I want to do is continue looking at words because words, the words that some people are speaking are destroying folks, absolutely destroying folks. And during a pandemic, what are we, what, are, what should we be called to do as Christians? Really and truly, what should we be called to do? We should be called to build up. We should be called to tell them there is hope, that there is a way out. And most importantly, there is a saviour who died for them and a saviour who loves them and a saviour who wants to give them a everlasting life and that's you know there's a whole lot of other stuff we should be doing but it's all good it's all it's all positive so what i want to do is continue on looking at words and we want to go to job here incredible story here job is is being had an onslaught from eliphaz who was one of his friends type of friend you don't want when you're in trouble by the way but he's one of his so-called friends and he's giving him an absolute onslaught of negativity there's not one positive thing in what he says and Job replies to him in Job 6, 24 and 27. This is Job's reply. He says, teach me and I will hold my tongue. Cause me to understand where I have erred. Cause me to understand where I have erred. How forceful are right words. But what does your argument prove? What, what are you saying, uh, Eliphaz, what does your argument prove? Now, Job's sort of scolding this guy. Now, he is scolding this guy. You're speaking very harsh words against me and you're proving nothing. Sometimes our words are just flippantly spoke and we walk away from the consequences and the disaster that they have caused. And this is what's happening here. Do you intend to reprove my words and the speeches of a desperate one, which are as wind? Yes, you overwhelm the fatherless, and you undermine your friend. I think these are incredible wor words that Job is speaking. Now, these are not words of judgment. These are words of grace. Job is trying to uh, get Eliphaz to see something with spiritual content. What Job needed, you know what Job needed during this moment in his life? Someone to come and put their arm around him. Someone to come and say, Job, we're with you in this 
and we're with you through this. He, last thing he needed was a guy like this coming and telling him, you've committed some horrible sin and until you repent, God, God's going to uh, continue to pour out scorn and judgment upon you. And we know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, we know that that was not the case. However, when you look at Eliphaz and his other friends, you'd think they were God Almighty. They've set themselves up as, as judge and jury. It's incredible. Now, in the regions of South America, uh, there's a, a, a snake called the two-step, right? The two-step. I've been to South America and I've been in the Amazon, as you know, and I've seen some snakes. Now, I didn't get too close, believe me. When I seen them, I, got, I remember one time playing football and the guy kept telling me to come in off the wing. And I thought to myself, this Brazilian's, you know, I thought it was good, you see. This Brazilian's trying to get me off the wing because I'm having a measure of success down here. It wasn't until he told me it was the snakes that can be 15 and 16 feet long. He was more concerned about, I'll tell you, I wasn't too long moving off the wing into the centre. It's amazing what fear can do of these little squirmy things that are filled with famine. And this, this snake called the two-step is called the two-step for a reason. And the reason they named it the two-step is once it bites you, you take two steps and you're dead. So it bites you, you take two steps and you die. It's venom swiftly paralyzes your nervous system and then immediately stops your heart. If you get bit with this snake, there's no comeback. Absolutely no comeback. But even if you don't visit South uh, uh, America, we're all in peril of doing something else that is just as deadly because you know and I know when we search the depths of our hearts, that words have the potential, the absolute potential, to kill relationships. Many relationships have been killed, destroyed by words. You know, I've been, I've, been, I've counseled people, uh, father and son, and, and, and they haven't spoken for years because of something the father said or something the son said. I remember talking to someone who hadn't spoken to his father for 30 years over, over an argument, over words. So that's not under mine. Uh, the power of words. Words can paralyze love. Words can poison minds. Words can destroy faith, stain purity, and deface reputations. Such is the power of words. And I think as Christians, we during this pandemic, we need to set a real example of hope. Uh, I know that I continue to say this, but then it's true. When you, when you turn on the news, the words that are spoken, they don't bring you hope. You know, it's, 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 it's filled with negativity. It's the worst scenario. I, I remember uh, a few years ago when, when Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, rocked the world when he was elected president, when everyone laughed him to scorn. And you will remember this. When he, when he came onto the scene, he used two words that became really all about him, you know, the, the, the media continually blasting him because of it. He would have stood up and, and a news reporter would have asked a question and the president would have put his hand up and said, no, fake news, fake news, fake news. And it was a new thing, but it's not new anymore because we have all witnessed fake news from the BBC, fake news from Sky, Fake news from CNN. I've seen the photos on Facebook where they're using the same hospitals that were used a few years ago. I've seen one uh, that Sky put out with coffins that are actually from a, 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 a slaughter in Africa about seven years ago. And, and it's, it's all news that destroys hope. Think about it. It destroys hope. We've got a battle on our hands, church, don't we? We have a battle on our hands. We, we are called to bring a message of hope. We are called to bring a message of love. We are called to, to speak words into people who are fearful that God is for you and not against you. We are here to tell people, you, 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 you need Jesus in your life. Embrace him and he will get you through. And even if he doesn't get you through, it's win-win anyway. But I go on to, to Facebook and I see some of, the, some of the Christians and they're judgmental. Bang, bang, bang. God has brought this pandemic because A, B, C, D. God is going to bring us all to your knees through this pandemic. And I think it's personally all nonsense. And the reason I think it's nonsense is because we're not under judgment. We are under grace. 
This is a period of God's grace. God is pouring out his grace and we need to receive that. Let's not get caught up with all the negativity. You go on to some of their timelines and honest to goodness, you'd be ready to commit suicide after you've finished reading them. It's just judgmental, 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 judgmental. It's incredible. And there's no hope. There's no way out. There's no love. There's nothing to aspire to. You know, Job recognized the capability of words to destroy when he exclaimed to his friends, how forceful are right words. How forceful are right words. After burying up under the onslaught of Eliphaz, the Tamanite, you can read that story in, in Job. Uh, it's from Job chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, the chapter 5 verse 27 read the onslaught of that guy and then ask yourself is this a type of fellow you want for a friend Job was brought to the very point of frustration by his friend by his friend brought to the point of frustration instead of helping his well meaning companion only serve to undermine his friend with words verse 27 read it again you overwhelm the fatherless and you undermine your friend with the words that you've spoken you know I, I was thinking just the other day and I think it's un incredibly true it's no small matter when we open our mouths you can't take it back you can't take it back when our words are right when our words bring hope when our words bring love they can be a powerful force for good but when they are wrong, they work like a deadly vamen, like the two-step, boom, boom, bang, you're dead. Instead of being helpful, they are incredibly destructive. And rather than building up our friends, our, our, our words can tear them down. Those who are weak and, and helpless, that's Job's reference to the fatherless. And, 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 and Job is saying, you know, I can take this from you. I can take this from you. But there are people out there, if they hear these words, you will absolutely destroy them. Destroy them. What do people need more today than anything else? Of course, it's Jesus. What would you put in number two? A hope. A hope that they have a future. A hope that there is a way out. And, and it is an immense calling of all of us. To speak that hope. To speak about Jesus. I'm not into the business of judging people. Because I'm not the judge. I'm into the business of, of being used by God. To rescue people. To speak words of hope into their lives. To speak words of comfort. To speak words of love. To speak words of healing. Not destruction. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world but that the word through him might be saved. And during this pandemic, may we draw close to the Holy Spirit and fully understand this. We need to build people up, build them up. We don't want to blow them away, do we? By what we say. So I think, if anything, we need to be careful today how we speak to others and what we speak to others and what we say and what we put on social media. Now everyone won't like it, even if it's right. Don't mind it. Don't Spend your time uh, casting your, your pearl to the swine. When you speak love, when you speak hope, leave it out there. Because it's God's word and God's word does not return unto him void and empty. Let the Holy Spirit do the work that he only can do. That of convicting or convincing, convicting and confer converting. So we consider words, especially in times of crisis, especially in times of a pandemic. The right word can bring healing. The right word can bring encouragement. The right word can bring hope. The right word can bring love. While the wrong word can destroy your relationship with another person. And sometimes it's difficult to get back. We need to be sensitive more than, than we've possibly ever been before. We need to be sensitive to God's spirit. We need to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need to seek God's guidance before we express ourselves. Take, take two steps back, take a deep breath and think before we engage. Ask God to set a guard over our mouths to keep us from saying the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong people. It's very scriptural, you'll find that in Psalm 141 verse 3. We're in, 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 in a, a pandemic 
And, and I don't know. Well, I know what's in the hearts of people. It's fear and uncertainty. And I don't want the church to miss this. I don't want anyone to miss this, the church. It will be terrible if we get out the other side of this and people look back and they say, wow, that the church in 2020 done nothing. Now, that's not the case. I know we're all doing so, so much. And I applaud you for that, for setting the example of Christ. But let's continue to do it. Let's continue to do it. And if possible, let's step it up. You know, let's step it up. Let's do it even more. There are people out there who are dying. There are people out there who are confused. There are people out there who are hurting. There are people out there who are broken. broken. There are people out there who are fearful. So we, we are one of the men's task we have an immense job we're called to do to speak words of hope into all of that and we can do it we can do it because we have the holy spirit to empower us and give us the right words so be blessed today be encouraged today speak to someone encourage someone keep doing what you're doing but as i've said step it up and may god watch over you and protect you and his face continue to shine on you and make you sense his tangible presence in a real way love you all miss you all miss all the fellowship together and hopefully we'll see you all soon have a wonderful day god bless